Well, joining me now is Lieutenant General Jenny Carignan, the Canadian Armed Forces Chief of Professional Conduct and Culture. General Carignan, good to see you. Thanks for having me. I do want to begin with uh, this number. We have this figure, 3.5% of regular force members saying they were sexually assaulted last year, either in a military workplace or in an incident involving a military member. It's a, the number when it comes to women is about 1 in 13. It's 1 in 9 non-heterosexual members. What's your response to seeing these numbers, which are actually getting worse compared to surveys that were done in 2016 and in 2018? We are, of course, very concerned uh, with uh, the statistics and the data that's coming to us via the survey. And this clearly illustrates the, uh, the urgency in continuing the work that we are currently doing in that space. So, uh, of course, uh, fully engaged in uh, continuing and improving our workplace within the CAF. Okay, now, uh, the Chief of the Defence Staff, General Wayne Eyre, said today, I'll give you that quote, the Canadian Armed Forces is committing to, uh, committed to eliminating all forms of misconduct, including sexual misconduct. Now, last month, you said that you were, quote, incredibly encouraged by the building momentum of our culture evolution efforts. Um, so I guess the question is, when Canadians see the kind of numbers that they're seeing today, um, why should they believe that change is actually happening? So the numbers that, uh, that we see today are um, absolutely key in informing the work we are doing. So uh, there's a lot of data in, uh, within the, the, the results of the survey that we need to uh, continue analyzing in more depth and as well balance with other research and surveys that we have also ongoing so that we have a clear uh, a better clear, uh, a clear view of what we are dealing with. Uh, so the increase in sexual assault and sexualized behavior um, is, uh, is, it can be both a good and a bad story at the same time. It's too early to really determine why at the moment. Um, but again, it's, it's a way for us to inform the work we are doing. We are seeing uh, some indicators within the survey as well uh, that seem uh, to provide us with um, some uh, positive trend within, uh, within our teams. So for example, uh, the majority of our members see a difference and see progress. Um, we also have a maj majority of our members who have a positive view of, of how their unit uh, is performing. And, then, and again, um, the level of awareness has also greatly improved since 2016. So um, um, we are absolutely engaged in, in pursuing the work that we are currently doing. Okay, just to go back to some of these, these numbers, and, and, and I'll, then I'll put a question to you, 66% of victims who reported an incident say they faced a negative consequence. That could be exclusion or bullying. It could be uh, an impact on their actual c career in terms of reprisal. Nearly half of the victims who didn't report say that's because they didn't think it would make a difference. So what's your message today to those serving members who perhaps don't see any point in actually coming forward? Yes, the, uh, the dynamics behind reporting are very personal and also very, very complex. So uh, the, there are clearly barriers to reporting uh, sexual misconduct. And this is also what we know in the general population, uh, sexual misconduct, uh, assault and, and incidents are underreported. So, we know that there are barriers and we understand what they are because they are illustrated as part of the survey as well. Within the survey, we have also noticed uh, that um, me our members responded that regardless of policies and, and new mechanisms and the safety of the environment, they would still not be reporting incidents. So. It, it, Analyzing those dynamics better will, will help us understand. What we are currently doing to remove those barriers is using a tailored approach to victim, a victim-centric approach uh, to give victims more agency over their own complaint. Uh, so the repealing of duty to report, 
uh, the option of going directly to the Human Rights Commission or you can report to your chain of command or to the police. So there's many avenues that are very personal to each victim as to how they want to report incidents. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we did get that uh, status report from the external monitor looking at the military's effort at uh, culture change. And uh, she did say the top military leadership is focused on that change, but cautioned that even simple changes can take a long time to implement uh, inside an organization as large as, as the Canadian Armed Forces. Uh, she also says you do have a multi-year plan to track those changes and whether they're working or not. When will the public see more of that, uh, that more granular detail? So we have uh, this plan uh, in place currently, uh, and it's it's just a matter of, of um, having the opportunity to put in to putting it out there publicly. Uh, so it, it has gone through the levels of approving approval uh, required. Um, but again, this is one of the many things we are doing uh, to uh, to our efforts in culture. Um, those changes need to happen at uh, the team level. This is where culture is at play. Uh, so again, we have designed various uh, mechanisms and uh, like it's, it's a cross between education, training. Um, it also involves uh, how, how we treat complaints uh, and how we treat both victims and respondents as they go through a complaint process. So again, many, many different um, initiative and approach will get, get us to where we need to be. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Lieutenant General Jenny Carignan, thank you so much for your time on this. Thank you again.